الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآل الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من أعوانه وأنصاره We offer our condolences to Imam Mahdi Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajah Al-Sharif for the demise anniversary of Lady Fatima Maksuma and we share with him his pain and sorrow for this great loss. There are different types of people in this world. Every person to some extent during his life can have some impact on the life of others. There are people that they affect their own family and perhaps neighborhood. There are people who affect the whole town or region. Sometimes there are people who affect the entire nation or even humanity. Those who are leaders of light or darkness, those who are in the Quranic sense, Imams who guide people towards Allah or who guide people towards hellfire, they have greater impact. You know, Allah says that there are people that are appointed as the leaders, Yahduna bi amrana, and there are people who are appointed as leaders, who yaduna illanna. In any case, these people, because of their leadership and the following that they have, they have greater impact. Sometimes you have people like Pharaoh that they affected lives of many people. They affected lives of thousands of people. You have people like Hitler, who affected the lives of millions of people. Even sometimes for generations, people still suffer because of what those mischief makers you know, have done. Or you have good leaders, good figures, that for generations or even forever, people can benefit from the services that they have rendered to humanity, the good that they have produced. So, people, depending on the talents that they had, the efforts that they made, the situation in which they exercised their functioning, the support that they had, the resources that they had at their different capacity to affect humanity. But something which is very interesting for me is that you have exceptional people that during their life you don't see that much impact on the lives of other people. Maybe they lived for a very short period of time. Maybe they were unknown to people at their own age. Maybe they didn't have support. I think she is one of such exceptional figures. If it was not because of some information given by Imams that I will mention about her role in future, about her intercession, for example. No one who lived at that time 
could expect that this lady is going to have such a high position, is going to affect lives of millions, if not billions of people, in the way that, inshallah, I'm going to explain. No one could expect that. No one could anticipate that. The most they could think that she is a very pious lady, a pious and knowledgeable daughter of Imam, and she would have a high position with God. They would never expect that this lady would have a very significant role to play when she dies. She is going to become the host for the most important place and center of learning and spreading the teachings of Ahlul Bayt and the spirituality of Ahlul Bayt to all people of the world. No one could anticipate that. No one knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his wise plans, he had decided that this lady must go away from Medina. If she had stayed in Medina, she couldn't have such a role. She must leave Medina and come to a place in which there are already lovers of Ahlul Bayt, there are narrators of Hadith who would welcome her and then invite other people to join them to enjoy the spiritual atmosphere of the town which is now significantly increased because of the burial place of this lady and then gradually gain energy and warmth from this lady to the extent that people from all over the world come to this town and they feel at home. I have heard from many people that when we come, they say we come to Qom, we don't speak Farsi, we don't know, you know, language of the people. But in Qom we feel at home, we feel very peaceful. We don't feel we are a stranger here. If we go to any other town, we feel we are a stranger, we are gharibe. But in Qom we don't feel at, that we are a stranger. You see that the Islamic seminary of Qom, since it was founded, never stopped to exist. There were ups and downs, but this town, right from the beginning, has always been a center for the followers of Ahlul Bayt and for spreading the knowledge of Ahlul Bayt. And inshallah, you will see that this will dramatically change in future. There is a hadith from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. You are all familiar with this hadith in which Imam said that in future a time would come not too long that Kufa will be empty from believers. Believers have to leave Kufa. Knowledge will go out of the town of Kufa in the same way that the snake goes out of its hole. The knowledge will appear, will manifest in a land called Qum. Then this balda, this town will become a source of knowledge and merits. And this will spread to all over the world to the extent that Imam said, Hatta la yabqa mustadhafun fiddin. Finally, there would remain no person in the world that has no access to true Islam. 
would have been deprived from having access to true Islam. And then Imam said, and that is near to the uprising of the 12th Imam. So this is something that is happening. We are part of this process. And if we inshallah act wisely, we can witness that inshallah. If we don't act wisely and nicely, maybe Allah takes this away from our generation again, you know, bring us back after, you know, few generations. But this is going to happen. And Qom is going to have such function. So, to be able to have such function, the city of Qom needed to have a very powerful source for inspiration, for spirituality, for warmth and energy and love to attract thousands of people from all over the world to the town, let them feel comfortable, inspire them, help them in education, help them in their spiritual life, and then they can go back or they can somehow contribute to the spread of this beautiful school of Ahlul Bayt to all people of the world. And I think this is at least one major aspect of the fact that we have in some hadith that through the shafa'ah, to through the intercession of this lady, the Shia will go to heaven. You know, we have this hadith from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, in which Imam said that for, the, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is a sanctuary, there is a haram. Inna lillahi ta'ala haraman wa huwa Mecca. Allah has a sanctuary and that is Mecca. وَلِلْرَسُولَيْ حَرَمًا The Prophet had a haram, had a sanctuary, and that is Medina. Amir al-Mu'maneen alayhi salam had a sanctuary, and that is Kufa. وَلَّنَا And for us, means from Imam Hassan alayhi salam, up to the end, we have also a haram. Where is our haram? Is it Karbala? Is it Mashhad? Is it Samarra? No. Imam Sadiq says, and that is Qum. Qum is the sanctuary for all Imams from Imam Hassan up to the end. And then Imam Sadiq said, Satut fanufi hamra'atun min wuldi. Soon a lady from my progeny will be buried in this town. Esmuha Fatima. Her name is Fatima. And through her intercession, our Shia will go to heaven. And the narrator says, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said this while Imam Musa alayhi salam was not yet conceived. وَلَمْ تَحْمِلْ بِمُوسَى أُمُّهُ Still the mother of Imam Musa, Qadim alayhi salam, and that is the grandmother of Lady Ma'suma, was not pregnant. Two generations before, Imam Sadiq said this, so I think one major aspect of her shafa'a for all Shia is that through the knowledge and guidance that from this town will spread all over the world, the Shia would be able to find their true path towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And inshallah, this will happen that the number of the Shia who would have benefited from the teachings that come from this town would be so much that compared to the little number of the Shia before this lady came to this town would be as if it is all. So if you imagine the population of the Shia in the first century and you know most of second century because the lady passed away in 201. So in those 200 years, if you imagine the population of the Shia compared to the population of the Shia who come 
afterwards, from 200 after Hijra onwards, you would see maybe it's one in million. So you can say that all Shia will go to heaven with the Shafa of this lady. And even those who were before, they can still benefit with this knowledge and spirituality and prayer and all the good things which the Shia do as a community. Because when you do something as a community, you do it for all members of the community. So don't be surprised why all Shia go to heaven through the Shafa of this lady. It's because nearly all Shia affect, are affected and benefited from the guidance which comes from this lady and the rest are indirectly also affected. And the rest is not also that much significant in population, quantity-wise. You can re really say that the you know, real number comes afterwards. So, it's not, I think, possible to say this was all by chance. Just an accident that this lady came here. It was something that had to happen. The lady was going to Mashhad, not Mashhad, to Marv, near Mashhad, to visit her brother. But on her way, she was stopped. You know, they were attacked. And according to some narrations, she became ill. And she asked to be moved to Qom, because she knew that in Qom there are lovers of Ahlul Bayt. So, in the surface, you think everything went without planning. Because the plan was to go to Marv to see her brother. But in the depths, you know that this was a plan by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Imam Sadiq, two generations before, informed that she's going to be buried in Qom. Sometimes there are things that, because we don't know the way it will evolve, we think it's chance. But there is nothing happening by chance in this world. Even I think it's not by chance that we are created in this generation. I don't have time to explain, but I think every person who is born in certain generation, it's not by chance. Those who are born in this generation had to be born in this generation. But this is another issue. So, this lady has been planned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come to this town. And here I want to make a very important point. Why such place needs a lady, not a man? You know, uh, the mother of Lady Maryam said, وَلَيْسَ الذَّكَرُكَ الْأُنْثَى Male is not the same as female. Man is not like woman. Sometimes people may think that it means that because she made a vow to devote her son to the temple, so now said, female is not like man, so it's not useless. But if it was like this, she had to say, لَيْسَ الْأُنْسَ كَالذَّكَرِ She said, لَيْسَ الذَّكَرُ كَالْأُنْسَ Means, a man can do things, but sometimes cannot do enough to a woman. Sometimes a man, despite his high position, may not have the same impact that a woman has. I personally believe that the role of mothers in upbringing good children is much more than fathers. Maybe father is closer to God, but mother is more influential. If you have a father who is very good, very knowledgeable, an ayatollah, but the mother is not good, the chance of the child becoming bad is very high. Sometimes we need a motherly figure. If you want to host generations of youths who come here to this town to learn, they leave their homeland, their family, everything. They come here and live sometimes 
in very difficult conditions. You need a motherly figure to be here, to welcome them and embrace them with love and passion and affection. And at the same time can upbring them. I believe every student who comes to Qom, if in the first day goes to the lady and honestly says that please you look after me, please you be in charge of my education and learning. I want everything to be submitted to you. If we say this honestly, then I am sure the lady will not forget us. Because this is why she is here. She is here to be a mother, but not a mother who just gives you food and dress. A mother who gives you a spiritual food. A mother who makes you feel comfortable and relaxed so that you can learn. A mother that inspires you with knowledge and wisdom and piety. And now imagine that if we have a community which is united in their hearts, they love each other for the sake of Allah, and this community as a whole adopts this lady as a mother, what will happen? So far, I think this has not happened. So far, mostly individuals have benefited from this role. But if as a community, the city of Qom and the whole seminary of Qom as one unified body, they submit their affairs to the lady, then Qom would reach that level that can function as ma'adinan lil ilm wal fadl, so that all people of the world can benefit from the knowledge, from spirituality that come from this town. So, this lady started showing her true face, her true reality, just when she died. So if you compare what the lady is doing after her demise to what she did before her demise, it's like, a, you know, for example, a seed which is planted and now has become a very strong and blessed tree. ضرب الله مثلا كلمة طيبة كشجرة طيبة أصلها ثابت وفرعها في السماء. When the lady passed, it still it was a sapling. It was a small tree. But this is growing. And inshallah, تؤتي أكلها كل حين بإذن ربها. And now you are surprised. What is in this lady? That among all members of Ahlul Bayt, she is picked up for such mission. Why no other person, no other lady? This lady must be very special. This lady must be very close to Lady Fatima. This is the second Fatima. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has planned for some reasons that Lady Fatima must not, be un, must not be known in this world before and after her death. She is like Laylatul Qadr and she will remain unknown. No one would realize the real position of Lady Fatima till the Day of Judgment. Even the lovers of Lady cannot know her position. Part of, only part of the light of Fatima, which is enough to fill the whole world with light, comes from Lady Fatima Tul Ma'asuma. This Lady reflects and acts as a mirror to reflect the light of Lady Fatima to people of the world. 
So therefore, it's right for us to say that this lady is a second Kotha. This lady would produce abundant, infinite, endless good in dunya. And inshallah, millions of people, if not billions of people, would sooner or later benefit from the light and guidance that come from this lady. Unfortunately, because part of what is needed to be done is must be done by us, it's delayed. If we were good people, if our level of light suited the level of the people who serve the lady, if we were good servants for lady, our lady would have attracted hearts of people of the world. But the problem is that the lady has servants like us. Therefore, instead of we helping, we become barriers. Sometimes we become obstacles for the light of the lady. We have to become transparent. We have to become very honest, very truthful. So that people by looking at us and hearing from us, then they would see there is only the light coming from Ahlul Bayt and in particular through this lady. But I am sure this is going to happen and Allah has planned and it's a matter of whether we are fortunate enough to play that role or would be another generation. But definitely this is going to happen inshallah. In the time of uh, Ayatollah Burujirdi rahmatullah alayhi, once a problem started, I'm inshallah finishing soon, I don't want to delay you. A problem started which was considered as a big threat for the whole Hosea al miyyah because the government found some oil near the town of Qom and they wanted to dig wells and you know produce oil here and that meant that Qom becomes an industrial city and lots of you know foreign you know consultants and technicians must come so the whole city would be transformed some people went to Grand Ayatollah Burujirdi and said you as a marja who is respected and has you know some power you should ask the king to stop this because this will ruin the whole history of Shia and you know, seminary. The Grand Ayatollah Burujirdi said, this is not happening. They cannot change the town. He said, this doesn't fit into the Hadith about Qom. And soon those wells went dry and they found it's not efficient. So they stopped. A person like Ayatollah Burujirdi has such understanding that he is confident that nothing will stop Qom from functioning its historical role. But there are things that can delay this. No one can stop Allah's plan, but people can delay it. This is possible. No one can stop coming of Imam Zaman, but people can delay. So this must make us very careful, extra careful, extra cautious, so that God forbids because of us, this is not going to be delayed. We don't want to be responsible for delay of this important historical role for the city of Qom. I finish with one hadith from Imam Raza alayhi salam. I had many other things to say. Perhaps I need to have a second lecture of lady, inshallah. But uh, I don't want to delay you. So I just finish with this hadith from Imam Raza alayhi salam. You are all familiar with this. Just we want to bless our session with this hadith from Imam Raza alayhi salam. There are many hadiths from Imam Raza about this lady. One hadith is this. 
that Imam said, Manzar al Ma'asuma Biqum Kamanzarani. You know, Imams don't exaggerate because they are appointed by God as our guide. A guide must not exaggerate. A guide must show the reality as it is. Otherwise, he would misguide us. Because we don't understand how much he has exaggerated. Truth is only one. But if you go beyond the truth, then there are many possibilities. If it is exaggeration, I don't know how much he has exaggerated. So I'm misguided. The only time I'm not misguided is when he says the truth as it is. So, Imam who never exaggerates says, Manzar al ma'asum biqum. The one who visits the immaculate lady in Qum. Who is Ma'asuma? The lady was not called Ma'asuma. This was not the name her parents gave to her. You know, if it was a name, you may say it doesn't necessarily mean that she was Ma'asum. She was, you know, immaculate. This is a title given by Imam Reza. You know, if my father has named me something, it doesn't mean that I have necessarily that quality. Yeah? If my father, for example, called me Akbar, it doesn't mean that I am great. Yeah? But if an Imam gives a title to someone, it means that that person must have a quality. The lady's name was Fatima. Ma'asuma is the title given by Imam. Manzar al Ma'asuma. I don't want to say that Ma'asuma here necessarily means infallible in the sense that we use for Imams. I don't want to suggest that, although there are many ulama who suggest that, but I'm saying that at least this means that this lady may maculate. She does not commit sins. She does not have, in addition to sins, anything in her heart which brings impurities. It's much more than just not committing sins. Her heart is pure. Her mind is pure. There is nothing other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in her heart. I don't want to say whether she doesn't make mistakes or not, whether she doesn't forget or not, the things that we need for imams and the prophets. That's another issue. That's a theological issue. But for sure she must be pure. She must be immaculate. And Imam Reza says, if you visit her, it's like you have visited me. Manzar al ma'asumata biqum ka manzarani. It means that it's not just a matter of reward, it's a matter of also impact. This is something that normally is not, I think, mentioned. If you want to benefit from the light of Imam Reza, if you want to benefit from the spirituality of the shrine of Imam Reza, the guidance, you can have the same experience when you visit the Lady Ma'asuma. So it's not just a matter of reward. Everything would be similar to visiting Imam Reza, alayhi salam. Let us stop here and... Inshallah, hopefully we'll have some chance in future to continue this discussion. May inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qualify us to be good followers for Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam and to be always at their service in spreading the true message of Islam inshallah. May Allah protect our seminary and all Islamic seminaries from everything which is bad and disliked. May Allah protect our seminaries from anything which stops them from functioning properly and in the way that would prepare them for playing a great role in Akhir zaman that Ahlul Bayt expect from them. May Allah protect the life of our ulama and marajah and all people who do good things for the name of Allah, promotion of the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah heal all brothers and sisters who are ill May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all marhumin, especially marhumin of the brothers and sisters who are here and those who have rights upon us. 
And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the last moment of our life the best moment of our life. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillah rabbil alam.